Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Shrooms. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with an American student, Tara, and her friends arriving in Ireland. Tara's Irish friend and their tour guide, Jake, welcomes the gang. During the ride, Jake informs them all about knowing shrooms that are organic drugs that can make people high. People experience different effects on their bodies, some freak out, while some get hallucinations. Jake tells them about the magic mushroom that gives boundless energy, visual hallucinations, uncontrollable laughter, and profound wisdom. They can be identified by the tiny nipples on the caps. They can brew to shrooms and take them as tea. As they drive through the forest park, Jake shares something sexual they do in Ireland. It's called dogging, where couples go to a remote area, make out in their car, and let people watch them. When the couple flashes the car light three times, that's the signal for the dogger to join them, and gives him a happy ending. Learning that the friend Bluto really loves the idea of dogging, while the rest are not so much in a fan. A goat suddenly comes out from nowhere, crashing through the car's hood, spreading its blood all over the windshield. They go all go out and check the scene, and they find the goat still clinging to life. It opens its eyes, shocking Bluto, who quickly beats it to death. The gang, especially Tara, dislikes what he did to the poor animal. They then notice two strange men nearby, and Jake knows that the dead goat is their dinner. After giving it to them, the gang continues their trip and soon stops in the forest. Before going out, Jake takes all their phone, because once they are under the influence of shrooms, they might call their parents, the police, or the ambulance. However, Bluto insists on keeping his cell phone, so Jake gives him the car keys. The girls, Tara, Lisa, and Holly, make the tent. While the guys, Jake and Bluto, make fun of Troy's martial arts skills. Lisa tries to make fun of Troy and Holly's relationship, as Troy is a weirdo. However, Holly argues that although he is weird, his hot dog is hot and impressive. Later that day, the three of them go to get the shrooms, while Tara wanders in the forest. Jake informs them about shrooms with black nipples. It is hazardous, and grows only once in every season. Their hearts, lungs, and kidneys will explode if people mistakenly take them. However, if they survive, the shrooms make them violent and allow them to communicate with the dead and even see the future. While wandering alone, Tara hears voices nearby. She hides behind a tree and watches silently, as Bluto tries to convince Holly to cheat on their partners. As she backs away to leave, Tara slips, causing her to fall and make noise. The two hear her, but quickly dismiss the noise to find the others. As they leave, Tara finds on the ground the shrooms with black nipples on the caps. As she is unaware of its effects, Tara takes one and eats it. She immediately suffers a seizure, as she experiences her first premonition of Jake finding her. Tara yells as her body convulses, and soon after, Jake comes running to her. As Jake holds her down, Tara stops moving, signifying that the shroom has infected her system. Jake quickly gives her mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, and fortunately, Tara comes back to life. Tara mumbles about seeing Jake, but he dismisses it as the shroom's effect. Jake carries her back to the campsite and lets her rest. Later that night, aside from Tara, the gang gathers around the campfire and boils the shrooms they got to make tea. To kill time, Jake shares a known story in the area about the empty children's home nearby. As Jake begins the story, Tara sees all of his descriptions in her dream. It was owned by a religious order, known as Black Knights of Comsil. These Black Knights ended in the area after doing missions, and they are far from being holy. They are treating kids, as if they were dogs for disobeying the rules in the house. If a kid disobeyed, he was banished to the kennel to live with the guard dogs. However, one brother stood among the order, for being completely sadist and merciless. He puts a three-inch steel blade into an old Irish fighting stick, and beats kids with it. The brother would torture the worst kids in the storeroom, hang them to death, and claim they committed suicide. One day, some twins were labeled the Lonely Twins, who offended the brother by throwing stones at the church. As a punishment, the brother scalded one's face and made him wear sacks over his head to hide the burns. He then hung the twin and forced the kid to watch his brother die. The remaining twin swore to have his revenge, so he picked up three pounds of deadly mushrooms and put them into the brother's soup pot. However, instead of dying from the lethal effects of the shrooms, sexual repression, Catholic guilt, and violence were unleashed. Because of this, almost a hundred people were massacred that night. However, there was a feral kid who lived with the dogs that survived the inhumane act of the brother. The brother and the remaining lonely twin are believed to be haunting the woods. And so, during shroom season, strange things occur around the area. They are reports of figures lurking in the woods, people getting hit by stones that come out from nowhere. There are also incidents of finding missing people mutilated, but they all have one thing in common. The injuries have been inflicted by a three inches steel blade. Right at that time, Tara wakes up and stops Jake from telling the story, and the gang agrees with her. 
While everyone is asleep, Troy and Holly take some shrooms before their workout. Holly notices someone lurking out in their tent as they caress each other's bodies. They also hear a twig snapping, so Troy furiously gets out of the tent and wakes up Bluto. He accuses Bluto of peeping out, and even insults him for using steroids. Everyone wakes up, and they see Bluto punching Troy right in the face, breaking his nose. Their girlfriends begin to argue too, insulting and threatening each other. Just then, Jake comes out and tells them that he passed by Troy and Holly's tent when he took a piss. Although they do not believe Jake, the couples return to their tents. As they get inside, Lisa expresses her frustration to Bluto, who has been a pervert. Bluto comes out, offended by Lisa's words. He goes to the campfire and drinks the shroom tea. Hours later, Tara gets a premonition of Bluto going into the woods. Bluto is so high from the shroom tea that he runs after a seductive yet strange woman in the woods. She quickly vanishes in the forest. So Bluto asks a talking cow about her. The talking cow tells him where the woman went, and Bluto runs after her. He finds a car in the middle of the forest. He excitedly goes to it, thinking he will experience being a dogger. He then lets his hot dog bark out and moans in pleasure as the woman walks his dog. However, he finds something else weird as he looks down. Bluto immediately removes himself and checks who is inside the car. The legendary brother appears, and he pulls Bluto's body to the window and cuts his smelly dog in half. Bluto screams and falls down from the pain, when he sees the brother getting out from the other side. Bluto crawls away, still holding his injured dog, but the brother attacks him with the fighting stick on the head. Then, Tara wakes up and immediately checks Bluto in the tent. After discovering that he is not there with Lisa, Tara searches for him alone in the forest. Fortunately, she finds him in the woods talking to the cow. She puts him in the tent and sleeps. The following day, Lisa wakes up and discovers that Bluto has cut off her hair. Lisa wakes up Tara, and they both search for Bluto in the woods. Lisa is pissed, but Tara is worried, as she vividly remembers what happened to Bluto in her dream last night. They hear the gang having fun shortly after, so the two immediately return to the campsite. They inform the gang that Bluto is missing, but they are not that worried, as Bluto pisses them off. Jake then says that Bluto almost drank the shroom tea. They also check the van, only to discover that Bluto had taken all their cell phones. Although under the influence, the gang set out to search for Bluto. While searching, Troy embarrasses himself to others by punching a tree to prove his martial arts. Tara dismisses it and leaves to find Bluto, and the girls follow her, leaving Troy and Jake behind. Troy takes his knife and cuts off his apple, while Jake confronts him about last night. Troy knows that it was not Jake nor Bluto who peeked out to them. Meanwhile, Tara gets a vision of the brother standing near them. She hysterically informs the girls about it and runs away, and they promptly follow her lead. Lisa thinks that Tara is having hallucinations, so Tara informs her that she saw Bluto's killer. She adds that after overdosing from the shrooms, she started having premonitions. They continue looking for Bluto when Holly and Lisa begin to fight, causing them to roll down the steep part of the forest. Fortunately, they do not hurt themselves that much. Lisa finds a hand, so she takes it, thinking it is Tara's. As she pulls the hand, Bluto's mutilated body falls on her. Tara immediately calms Lisa, who is hysterical after accidentally finding out Bluto's body. Suddenly, Tara sees the brother again, so she immediately yells at the two to run. They follow her order, but Holly accidentally gets separated from them. As they run, Tara hits a tree branch, causing her to have visions of her friend's deaths. In the visions, she sees Holly running deeper into the woods and finding the strange men they encounter on the road. They let her in their creepy and filthy place. The two strange men share that they were in the children's home as kids. As she realizes that she's facing a creep of men, she locks it, finds a metal weapon, and escapes through the bathroom window. She runs away, but the men and the feral kid who used to live with the dogs chase her. Then Tara regains consciousness and immediately looks for Holly. Meanwhile, as they look for the girls, Troy shares that Tara was pissed at them after she found out about their plan to go to Ireland. They then experience hallucinations, so Jake immediately tells Troy that they should find the girls quickly. However, Troy slips and falls to the ground, where he finds Bluto's hand. The lonely twin then hides, as he throws at them. They immediately leave the area, and look for the girls. While looking for Holly, Tara finds Lisa, and Tara shows her the hairband clothing Holly used to wear. As they search for Holly, they find Jake and Troy from the other side of the lake. Jake shouts at the girls to meet them at the empty children's home. The men leave to go to the house, while Tara suddenly falls to the ground and convulses, as she sees another vision. This time, the feral kid kills Holly and one strange man, and Holly's body is in the lake. She also sees the brother, herself, and an axe in the water. Then the vision stops, and Tara immediately tells Lisa to pull Holly's body from the water. Lisa goes in and finds an axe. Tara tells her to look over by the rope, 
As Lisa pulls the rope, Holly's lifeless body emerges from the water. Lisa screams in horror, while Tara cries as her dreams come true, and she is next. Upon learning this, Lisa leaves Tara alone, as she does not want to be dead. Shortly after, Tara gets another vision, and it is about Lisa's death. Lisa is walking in the water, when the brother emerges behind, and attacks her. Tara takes the axe with her, as she looks for Lisa. However, she's too late. She finds Lisa's body floating in the water. Tara composes herself, and goes to the empty children's home to look for Jake and Troy. As she wanders the halls and floors, Tara repeatedly gets visions of the brother chasing her. Meanwhile, the guys hide in the room, as they hear voices calling out to them. Troy accidentally drops his knife outside the door, and the brother takes it. The brother plunges the knife into the door, so Jake immediately instructs Troy to open the other door. Troy obliges, but the door is locked. Jake then hears Tara screaming his name, so he looks through the gap, waiting for Tara to appear. Troy uses his lighter to see the door lock, but he finds the lonely twin creeping from below and killing him. Jake turns around and sees Troy is gone, so he immediately leaves the room, but hears someone calling his name. He tries to look for Troy through the door gap, but instead, someone shows himself. Jake promptly runs away and jumps from the terrace. Tara comes running outside and helps Jake walk as he breaks his right leg. Tara feels the brother's presence lurking out as they walk into the woods. She leaves Jake and looks for the brother. However, the brother crawls downwards from the tree and attacks Jake. Tara turns around as she realizes her mistake and runs to Jake. His nape is bleeding uncontrollably, but he tells her he loves her with his last breath. Tara screams in agony before giving Jake a kiss goodbye. She sees the brother coming out behind a tree, so Tara has no choice but to run for her life. Hours later, Tara wakes up, carried by the paramedics. As she gets checked in the ambulance, the police are doing their investigation at the campsite. She hears the strange man scream as the police arrest him. But Tara knows he is not the killer. While on the way to the hospital, Tara hears a phone ringing. But it is not the paramedic's cell phone, it is hers. Right then, Tara gets a flashback of what really happened. The deadly shrooms affected her more than she knows, that it caused her to blame the death of her friends on the legendary brother, when it was actually her that murdered them all. Tara does not disclose what she realized to the paramedic, but instead kills him. Blood scatters around in the vehicle. The film ends with Tara escaping the ambulance and running to the woods, with the deadly shrooms still in effect. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.